what's going on everybody hope everybody's off to a nice week and uh they were able to refocus themselves following the election i know definitely some uh some long nights and tough to work during those times so i hope you guys are all back at it and everything's going as well as possible so um we're about to dive right here into part two of my interview with david herman the partner manager uh twitter sports Definitely a pretty long break between getting the two parts out. I'm going to look to improve on that moving forward. Just got a little bit caught up in uh, my typical day job. So this next little part is going to, it's pretty short, about 15 minutes. We're going to cover Twitter sports and their role in the high school space and with kind of smaller level college sports. We'll talk about how the platform is unique um, in comparison to other social media and why it really is the world's best sports bar, as we previously called it. And then we're going to finish off with some quick hits, covering some of the best Twitter beef that you've seen over the past couple of years. Um, And then also, what are some accounts to really look out for on the platform? So hope you guys all enjoy, and I I look forward to um, continuing to get some, uh, some great interviews up for you all. Obviously, you guys work with the major leagues and the bigger conferences like you may be doing in college football, but... Is there any type of help uh, or just assistance working with smaller conferences or high school sports in terms of Twitter sports and getting their content up on the platform? Is that something that you guys do as well? You know, we're only eight or, eight or so people, and so our bandwidth is tight. Uh, we, we try and be as helpful as we can. You know, I, I have a, a distribution list of 500 plus different entities and sports that when there's stuff we want to announce and get out at scale um we try and make sure everyone knows about it uh and hears from us directly the other times were though you know for more premier product launches or bigger things where we can only tell our top tier partners and they're the only ones who can get early access or you know so we kind of have to be a little selective at times we try and be a resource High school sports um we don't do as much in the scale and the reach just it, it isn't there for us um, and it's, it's not a knock on high school sports in any way, shape, or form. It's simply high school sports don't find themselves on Twitter that much. Um, you know, it's, it's not a community we see as uh, super, super intense. We've done programs related to high school sports before. Uh, we, we partnered with Adidas uh, and Intersport a number of years ago on live streaming some high school football games on Twitter. It was a great program and fun and really fit Adidas's initiatives in the space. Um, and was great, but uh, if we're looking at scale and overall, and also looking at where advertiser demand um, lies, uh, high school is, is usually where we cut it off. Across the college space, though, we work with power, everyone in the Power Five, um, and we try and be a resource to the smaller conferences in terms of, you know, excuse me, them knowing that they have someone to reach out to when, when they need some assistance from us, but um, it's not something we're often as proactive on just from a bandwidth perspective. Definitely. And uh, I did actually intern at Intersport before. So I remember that going on and it'll be interesting to see whether um, that potentially changes based on the name, image and likeness rights. I mean, yeah. I was looking through before this at guys like Brownie James, Amani Bates, just some very popular younger basketball players. And right now, most of their content lives on Instagram, but It'll be interesting to see how they use Twitter um, as they can kind of integrate sponsors and and really blow up moving forward. So that'll be something to watch for all of us. So I'm also curious because one of the things I love about Twitter is it's really an intersection at oftentimes between sports and culture. You'll have a thread on a major, um, on like a LeBron James post where you'll have rappers commenting, you'll have rock singers you'll have actors and actresses so how do you view twitter as really like an intersection of culture and really like what differentiates twitter my bad um in comparison to the other platforms in that type of way yeah i think there's it's simple for our perspective is there's no other platform where people converse like they do on twitter there's no other platform where you'd have um i don't know if you saw uh, you know, there's, there's no other platform where you can simultaneously have everyone talking about the same thing across a number of different communities. So I always like the Game of Thrones example. Who wasn't tweeting about Game of Thrones, regardless if you were watching Game of Thrones or not, right? It's that cultural phenomenon of what is 
you know, I, I don't want to say we have the world on Twitter. We have a good amount of users and it's not necessarily representative of everyone, but in our own little Twitter world, if you were on Twitter and not talking about Game of Thrones, you really weren't doing Twitter right. I mean, you missed out on an incredibly fun conversation. The people bashing Game of Thrones, the people watching Game of Thrones, the people making fun of the people on either side. I mean, it was an incredibly kind of fun back and forth atmosphere. So I think what makes Twitter unique is a combination of the real-time uh, conversation and focus, both of those decoupled, real-time and conversation, but then also, based on how Twitter works with trending and everything else that you have that's showing you what's actually happening in that moment, um, everyone jumps into that conversation and that's where it gets fun. Um, you know, Twitter is great, uh, but we're only as cool as people talking about stuff. So um, we need people tweeting to continue that kind of um, discourse and that, that fun back and forth. But it is a big mix of sports, entertainment, news, culture. I mean, Let's take the debate from the vice presidential debate from a few weeks ago, uh, the fly. Where else would the fly have been uh, such a big thing other than for Twitter? I mean, it was insane. There were like a million tweets about the fly within five minutes or something crazy. I don't remember the exact stat, but, um, you know, uh, that was a wild convergence of events of uh, something everyone's watching, something everyone's talking about, and then boom, something crazy happens. That is the beauty of Twitter. You can jump into those conversations, both have fun, and there are times where it's really funny, like the fly, there are times where it's not as funny and more serious. And, um, you know, uh, obviously we're in, a, we're in a contentious election cycle and Twitter is a big part of that. And, um, you know, next few weeks will be interesting on that front uh, as it always is, but um, there's really nowhere else like it for better or for worse. It's, uh, it's quite a unique place. Um, again, not oftentimes, representative of all of the different viewpoints and different perspectives and opinions, but it is a place where you can go and really converse with others that you know, that you don't know, that you want to know, that you uh, would like to know better, uh, and just uh, all be in the same boat of talking about something that's going on. I definitely agree. I mean, you never feel closer to that star athlete or a league or potentially even a brand like Wendy's. Um, I remember it was just a couple of months ago. I, I tweeted, I tweeted how our red box is still a thing, like the things outside mm -hmm. of Walgreens and within a minute, red box replied to me. I'm like, this yeah. is so strange, but that's an example of how you don't think that's going to happen. And next thing you know, you're talking to a brand on Twitter and you're really not getting that anywhere else. Like you don't feel like you're behind that wall that sometimes you would feel on Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of in an effort to round out here, I want to go with a few quick hitting questions that I think will be pretty fun. So what are your favorite moments on Twitter where you're just like, oh, I got to check right now. Like you can't miss this moment. And then I'll give one of my own. It's a tough question because I'm on Twitter way too many hours of the day. Um, but um, I think there are a few that stand out. One is Tiger Woods winning the Masters. Um, both, both Tiger winning the Masters, but then also his first win, you know, a, a couple months before that, uh, his first win back, I should say. Um, the um, Golf Twitter is an interesting place. I, I'm, I'm a pretty big golf fan, but, you know, you had this amazing, everyone was rooting for Tiger. And to watch that play out on Twitter, and kind of people cheer him along in that same way. And, and just the reaction, you know, when, when he won the Masters, to see all of the celebrities, the athletes, individuals, everyone really recognizing what an achievement that really was. Um, it, it, that was a special moment for the platform. It was really, really cool. And I think a unique one in, in how everyone came together in, in that really special moment. Um, and, and it was fun to watch that with everyone and be and see everyone's reaction to that at the same time. That's one that comes to mind that I still remember as as um, incredibly incredibly uh, powerful. But you know, it's the little ones also. Uh, I remember I don't even remember when this was a few years ago. Uh, it was a regular season football game. Uh, no, I'm sorry, a college football game. Um, it was the LSU. Texas A&M game, the seven overtimes or whatever it was. I believe it was Texas A&M LSU. 
I have uh, Jimbo Fisher's first year over there. Yeah, seven overtimes. Everyone's exhausted. You can't really watch TV. Seven overtimes goes on forever. I mean, everyone's just like, let this thing end. And you're doing that on Twitter. It's fun. Um, those are the ones that you remember. Just the random games that have crazy endings. That's when some of the best moments come out. Um, so there's a million examples. Um, but Tiger winning the Masters and that kind of six-month stretch of Tiger was a fun one. Yeah, no, that's, that's a phenomenal example. And for me, I think after this sports hiatus that was just going on a couple of months ago, um, I really knew the NBA was back when Luka Doncic hit that ridiculous buzzer beater and Twitter just exploded. And I was once again yeah. rejoicing in the NBA Twitter community, which is always a, a very strong and fun one, um, mix of just so many different people. So yeah. also I'm curious, what is a brand or a league or a team that we should look out for on Twitter, one that just produces some great content from like a storytelling or just like a very, it being cool perspective. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Wendy's. Wendy's does an awesome job of having a brand voice, but so many brands do now. I mean, Wendy's started that kind of culture of brands really being vocal on Twitter, but there's a million examples now and they're all amazing. Netflix, um, um, I, you know, there's a ton of examples on the brand side. You no, know, I think from the league, all the leagues are doing a good job. I, I think the NFL does a phenomenal job storytelling um, across platforms too, not just Twitter. Um, but I think, you know, the NBA um, culture and community um, is still is still a very special place. But, you know, I, I think you also have to look at the team level. There's some teams who are doing some amazingly creative things on the platform across sports, NFL, NBA, college, MLS, MLB, WNBA. Um, and so it's hard for me to, to pick on these, pick one example here, but you know, there really are a, a ton of, of good ones. And I, I think what the beauty of right now is that everyone inherently understands the value of social media and there's more focus and effort being put into social content than ever before. Um, not just uh, as, you know, a lot of folks like to say the intern running the social media account, which was never really a thing anyway for most companies, right? But um, social media managers, marketing managers, they work very hard to program these platforms. They work all the time. And I think we're finally starting to see the recognition of that and how much benefit it can, it can be to your brand when you have a really strong social presence. And so I'm just excited of generally where we're headed of uh, people continuing to get better uh, with social and more resources being put in and different ways to storytell, uh, not just on Twitter, but across all the platforms. And I think players really buying in also. I mean, on a college level, LSU is a great follow on Twitter. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm a Duke basketball fan. They do some really cool stuff, but you see players wanting to dance for the platform, wanting to do Q and A's or, or be involved in polls and voting. So it really is a great thing to see. And then my last question is, before we say goodbye, is what's the best Twitter beef that you've seen? I have a few of my own, but you got two guys going back and forth. It's always fun to watch. Yeah, this, I mean, there, I, Kevin Durant is elite on the Twitter beef front. I, I mean, he he's, he's just elite, uh, especially that he last. He doesn't care. <laughs> no, and, and, and so you got to respect it. Um, gosh, there's so many examples here. That, that Kevin Durant one was amazing. And, uh, look, in the bubble, you had so much beef. I loved, I loved all the random conversations of guys who were playing Madden with each other and then tweeting about one sheeting right after he did this or he did that. I mean, those great. are the little – I'm, I'm a big fan of finding those little ones versus, like, the ones that blow up, like, a, you know, a Kevin Durant example. But, um, oh, it's endless. The beef is endless, truly. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, I only really, I might, I might need to get into some of those smaller holes because I'm not finding the, the little ones like you. I mean, I saw the Damian Lillard, uh, the Blazers versus the Clippers. That, but that's the exact example of kind of what you were saying where it's physical and then virtual, like that was happening online and then they're really yapping it up in person or it may have happened yeah. the other way around. But either way, it's just crazy how that happens. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Twitter really fun place. Isaiah Thomas is good on the platform as well. They yes. got to give him another chance in the league. All right, David, really appreciate it. This has been such an interesting conversation to my viewers. I hope you guys learned something. If you're not on Twitter, I don't know what you're doing, but you should be now after this. So really appreciate you guys. And I hope you enjoy the conversation.
Thank you.